I do like to paint things which are connected to the seasons and this time of the year it's not that easy to find really colourful flowers or other subjects. But black-eyed Susans are a justifiably popular garden flower and some of you might still have them flowering in October. So I decided they would be a nice colourful floral subject. I'm going to do this painting in two parts and this is part one. So today I'm going to be testing um, some arches or arche watercolour paper which has been kindly sent to me from a friend in America, thank you Denise, uh, to try it out because um, I think we get different paper over here, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, I'm going to do a loose floral um, meander on here, some, um, oh, some orangey flowers with brown middles. Oh, lazy, Su black eyed Susans, that's it, not lazy Susan, that's something else entirely, um, <coughs> excuse me. So, right, so this is a pack of sheets of 300 grams per square meter or 140 pound cold pressed paper, which Arches calls grand fin, which in English we call uh, simply cold pressed or in England we call it not, N-O-T, paper. Don't ask me why. Well, I know why, but anyway, I won't bore you with that. Um, so the first thing, actually, when I opened this up and had a look at it, um, I, I've been using arch, arch paper for a long time. I first started using it when I was um, studying veil painting in the School of Anthroposophy, and they only use arch paper, 100% um, cotton. So I'm familiar with that and I have been for many, many years, but for a long time I was using up a stock of paper that was old. So I haven't really bought any lately. And I must say, regardless of whether or not we're going to find that the um, characteristics and the way it works is the same, it does feel different. It feels thicker, to be honest. It feels stiffer and it feels coarser. So that's my first impression of this paper. And looking at it, it looks much more like um, a Bockingford or even Etival to look at. But of course, it should behave completely differently. So in order to try it out, I'm going to do a wet in wet background and some um, petals and things on top of that. And we'll get an idea of how it actually flows and so on and so forth. So um, I'm going to... I'm not going to stretch it because if you stretch paper, of course, you do have to put water on it. And um, that means that the, um, the sizing is affected by that. And if, if, you, um, if you want to test the paper out in its pure and, and unadulterated state, it probably would be better. And I hadn't really thought about this before, but it, it seems to me that it would be better to test it unstretched. So I'm just putting some washi tape around the outside edge here so that I'll end up when the painting is finished with a neat white border, more or less neat, more or less white around the outside. And hopefully it will hold it down. This um, particular tape is nowhere near as good as uh, masking tape at holding things down, but it looks prettier. Don't you agree? Um, so there we are. Let's put two pieces of that there. Now the colours I'm going to be using, I've selected a sort of palette on this kind of, um, what's the word, range of colours. So I'm going to be using the following. This is um, a bright yellow. This is, I think, equivalent cadmium yellow, quinacridone gold burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber, and uh, Payne's grey, sepia, and obviously these are going to be sort of for the centres, and these with, um, this is uh, bright red and olive green. And you can find all of these colours in any regular set of paints. I think you will find them pretty much anywhere. And I'm hoping that they're going to blend together to make a nice harmonious painting. Something along those lines. Don't you think that's good? This I've just tried out on this piece of paper and this illustrates what I was saying about paper that's been soaked because this, this is arches as well and it was soaked 
and somebody painted something on one side of it. And when I came to use the back as a test sheet, I found that it was turned into blotting paper. And you can see that all of this um, um, sinking in of the color here, this, this shouldn't happen. That is not the effect that you are looking for. So that's no good, not even for testing really. Um, so let's get started. Brushes. Um, I've got a brand new Ron Ranson Hake, which I bought from um, off Amazon, came from the SAA in England, but via Amazon. Um, I've got the medium size that measures just a fraction over an inch and uh, it's made by ProArt. I have varnished it. It came completely unfinished. And um, I know full well that if I keep immersing that in water, as you would with a hake, uh, or any paintbrush really, come to that, um, what happens is, um, what happens is this. This is the exact same brush which I've had for quite a few years, I have to say, but it's the exact same brush. I didn't varnish it. I just trusted in the manufacturer for the uh, ability to know what was right and what was wrong. Well, that's what happened. The, uh, the string broke and the hairs fell out. So I've varnished this one and I've made sure I've put plenty of varnish over the string all the way around and over the hairs here to give it a chance of lasting a bit longer. And it feels much nicer too, because it's nice and smooth. Whereas this was kind of rough. And I'm using my black tulip set for the sake of the rigor. This is Zen Art. And all the information about the brushes I'm using is either on our blog for this particular painting or else, um, yes, well, that's the best place to go. Go to dianeanton.com if you want to download the tracing of this painting or any others free of charge, and you'll find all the information about what we use and how you can buy it from Amazon or wherever it comes from. And then I've got this one, which is also part of the same set from Zen Art, very reasonable price and decent brushes. And these are two of my draw well brushes, a size 14 and a size nine. They come from Japan, I get them direct. You can too, if you contact them direct, they will send them to you wherever in the world you live. And they do speak English. So, so there we are. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sort of wet in wet background. Just kind of, that was nearly a disaster. I'll put that down there. Um, I'm just going to kind of drop in some water, first of all in a kind of random way. I don't want to cover the whole paper and make it soaking wet. And then I'm going to take some light yellow and just dash it in um, fairly, um, what's the word, irregularly. A little bit of uh, quinacridone as well. Perhaps a little bit more quinacridone, quidac Quinacridone near the middle, because the flowers are going to be more or less in the middle. I'm leaving white, and I'm going to try to pop in a tiny bit of red, sort of pink it down a bit near the bottom and in a few places. And now as I am trying out a, a new brush. So I'm going to get some loose hairs. B, different paper. So I should try to pay attention. Pay attention to what I'm doing I should do, shouldn't I? And I have to say, if you hear me shouting, please forgive me, but I've got... An, I suffer quite badly from... Well, I suffer. <laughs> I don't suffer. I experience quite significant inconvenience with allergies. And um, just recently, the weather's turned cold. And so I raked out a woolly hat from the drawer and I put on this woolly hat. And um, later in the same day, I realized my ears were blocking up. And uh, it occurred to me as I took off the hat that probably what it was was um, the hat had got musty and moldy over the winter and I should have washed it. 
before I wore it didn't occur to me because I'm allergic to mold. And um, that was silly, wasn't it? Yes. So anyway, my ears blocked up and they're still a bit blocked. <coughs> Which doesn't make me the happiest person on the planet. So there we are, that's, that's the uh, light, pale variegated wash that I put on this paper. And uh, it's <coughs> spreading nicely. To admit that my hake has dropped quite a lot of hairs here and there, but I think it doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered up. I can't get them to come away, but they will when it's dry. There's a, a very nice soft blending going on down there. And up here where I didn't put any water, we've got a few sharper lines, which is quite nice because when we put the next layer on, that will um, give a bit more texture. So basically, I'm going to let that dry off a bit. Well, actually, when you're doing wet in wet, um, you've got two choices. You either go in as soon as you've put the first layer on and add more color, or else you wait for it to dry. Because if it's almost dry, you'll get cauliflower's back runs. <clears throat> so I have to leave that now. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is dry now. And as you can see, we've just basically got a, a slightly random variegated uh, background there that we can work on. And it's completely dry, so I don't need to worry about backgrounds. In the meantime, while I was waiting for that to happen, I've printed out um, a photo from somewhere online just to use as a reference. And I've discovered um, four things I didn't know about uh, black-eyed Susans, um, which is that there are four different types, at least, and that they come in all sorts of different colours, uh, ranging from yellow to purple, believe it or not, which is quite surprising. But anyway, so that means that gives us free range. We can use our imagination and just paint them whatever colours we like. We don't have to worry too much about being true to nature because nature is infinitely variable. Hence, I've decided to change the colours that I'm going to use. Um, and I'm going to go for, I've changed, I've swapped out the red for a more pure orange. And this one is Permanent Vermilion from Art Spectrum, which I discovered in my drawer of goodies the other day. And I would totally forgotten that I'd got it. And it's a lovely orange. So that's going to be nice. We'll use that. And then instead of the um, cadmium yellow that I had, I also discovered a transparent yellow. This is Winsor & Newton transparent yellow. And of course, for flowers, obviously, um, it's better to use transparent paints if you possibly can, because they're lighter and more full of air and light and life, I guess. So this is transparent yellow, which is, um, together with that, I think that's going to be quite nice. I'm going to be very uh, sparing with the um, burnt sienna, because that's an earth color and um, tends to go a little bit um, down. So we don't want too much of that. But I do have sepia, which is a transparent dark, dark brown. <clears throat> and I've got um, burnt umber, which also, again, is an earth color, so we need to be careful. Um, then I've still got my olive green and I've got Payne's gray to darken up the brown in the shadow areas that we'll put in when we do the centers. But first of all, we're going to do the petals. So I'll put that to one side. And I've also been testing out my brushes and um, the leaves of the, the petals of the um, um, Black Eyed Susan aren't pointed. So I was looking at these two brushes and thinking, you know, I like this one for points, but that's too pointed because when you start to use that to do the petals, you get this kind of effect. And that's not what the Black Eyed Susan has. It has much more rounded ends. So in order to achieve that, we don't want to work against ourselves with a pointed brush. So if you have one that's more blunt, like this one, my draw well is blunter, um, I'm going to try that because that gives me more of this shape, which I think is going to make it easier to use. So we'll do that. So. 
you can see that there's quite a lot of preparation goes into a painting when you're doing something completely from scratch. Uh, it's not just a case of picking up the first brush and the first piece of paper and the first colours that come to hand if you want to do something um, reasonable. So it's, the day is passing and it's quarter past 12 now and I haven't even started, dear me. Um, so let's get cracking, shall we? I'm going to pick up some of this transparent yellow. Um, I'm standing up to paint today, don't know why, uh, but I am. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. So I suggest that you get yourself into the mood of being splashy uh, in order to do this painting. Don't be too hung up as I have been all morning on preparation and so on and so forth. So once you are prepared, then you can paint with gay abandon. That's one of the things I like to do when I'm um, preparing backgrounds and so on and so forth. Um, you get everything out, you get everything ready, and then you can really get creative. So, and then I should shut up. So I'm just putting in rough shapes, first of all. And at the same time as I'm doing this, I'm considering the uh, the paper because uh, we want to know how this is going to work out, being as it's, as I said, American. Although it says on it, of course it says on it that it's made in France, and I'm sure it is. Um, so it's gone all the way from here to America, gone home with Denise in her shopping basket, and then... She has said, oh my God, I hate this stuff. And she sent some to me to see what's wrong with it. And uh, yes, sorry, I can't do an American accent. Sorry, Denise, you have to sound English for the minute. My sister's name's Denise, which I'm not sure is a, I don't know if there's any connection there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where my sister is. She's moved. I think she's gone to live in Tunbridge Wells. I used to live in Tunbridge Wells as well. Anyone out there from England used to live in Tunbridge Wells? The town in England that has as its slogan, love the place you live. Yes, exactly. Get on with it. <laughs> and anyone who's been living in Tunbridge Wells for most of their life like me would, would perceive the irony of that statement. <laughs> hmm. Yes, the fun thing about Tunbridge Wells is that, I mean, my children were born there and they're all old now, so it's been a long time, that town, I've known it since I was very young, and um, they've never repaired any of the roads. It still has the same road system and the same potholes that it had in 1974. Can you believe it? Right, I've picked up transparent orange, permanent orange, and I'm going to drop some of that into the centres of all of these... Uh, um, flowers and uh, I'm going to do this fairly randomly I've made myself laugh that's the first time I've laughed in days I'm not allowed to laugh at home if I laugh in the front room and my husband's watching television he gets cross with me doesn't like it when I laugh I don't know do I have an ugly laugh perhaps that's the trouble so all of these have got to have a bit of orange so we'll do a bit of orange in all of them. And this is nice, this permanent orange, or whatever, permanent vermilion, it's, it's nice. I'm glad I, I, actually, Tamsin found it for me. She said, what's this? I didn't think you had any art spectrum paints anymore, or you can't get them anymore. But that's not entirely true. You, you, I probably said that, but that doesn't mean to say it's true, because not everything I say is true. Uh, most of it is. Some of it's very insightful too. Um, Anyway, what was I saying? Yes, you can get it from Jackson's. They have it. But I don't know whether they have all the colours. I was looking for Aussie green gold and a few of the other colours that um, Hugh Braiding used to use. And I couldn't get those from them. So I don't know. So, okay, so this paper is working fine at the moment. I'm not having any problems. 
at the moment. God knows what the whole thing's going to turn out like. But I'm coming in now with some water and I'm kind of blending the flowers together so that you get the impression, I suppose, of um, more flowers in the distance with no shape. And I'm sort of softening the um, strokes that I put in to start with in as many places as I feel necessary so that we've got a mixture of hard and soft lines. And so now I think we probably want some more of the orange. So I put that I'm going to put that where I had it before and let it run. I'm not really a flower painter. I, uh, I, um, I paint them quite often, but I, I am always, um, what's the word, hesitant about, well, not, I don't know, what do I mean? I, I never know quite how it's going to turn out. I'm not a confident flower painter. That's the thing. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I mean, it's the same with anything, isn't it? When you're doing something like this, uh, it's important to not fiddle too much. So try to put down strokes and leave them. Easier said than done. And then I think um, what I'm probably going to do is let it dry again. Well, I might give myself some structure and start putting in, should I put in some of the centers? Perhaps, I'm not sure. Just to give me an idea where the paint, where the flowers are going. Something that um, Arches claims you can do with their pa paper is that you can take out the colour that you have put on when you change your mind. So let's see. Let's say we wanted to take this back to white. Wow. Look at that. It's true. Ooh. That's quite fun, isn't it? Quite carried away with that. I think if you live in a very uh, arid area where things dry very quickly, which is about as far away as you can get from Brittany, you might find that the paper dried quickly, but that is not what's happening here. Although we've got air conditioning and it is drier in here than it is outside. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm having any problems with this paper drying overly fast at the moment. Anyway, it's still quite damp. So it's now at the point where I can't do any more. I have to wait for that to dry or I have to give it a good walloping with the hair dryer because otherwise I'll get unnecessary back runs and I won't be able to control anything. So that has to dry now. So I'm going to turn you off. So having got to this point in the painting, I'm going to let it rest and I'm going to give myself time to digest what I've done and I'm going to let the painting uh, take its time to dry and to spread out. And as we know, you know, with any painting, especially where you're working wet in wet, overnight, the elves and the gnomes come and they take a look and they adjust things. They move things around here and there. And when you come back in the morning, sometimes you hardly recognize what you did the day before. And it's very true. 
Um, so I don't know how this painting is going to go. Let's call this end of part one. It's 25 minutes of video, which I'm sure is quite enough of me for anybody in one session. So I'm going to let you go now and um, I'm going to go and have lunch and I will make the second half of this video tomorrow uh, and uh, come back and see where we take it because I'm sure it's going to be somewhere I don't expect, let alone where you expect it to go. So uh, yeah, I'll say goodbye for now, everybody. Take a quick look at the website if you want to download any of our sketches and look at our merch shelf on here, as well as our shop on the website too, if you are interested in mugs and things with our designs on. So I'll let you go. Have a lovely evening. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.